I said at the time that it was very important to me and to a lot of other people that the club was, uh, the club was saved in its current form. So that was very much the objectives of the Blue Knights, um, which was a term that was, was, was coined very early, but uh, doesn't, doesn't really mean a lot apart from the fact that uh, the people in the Blue Knights care about the club uh, passionately. Uh, because of that objective, um, it was very much clear to us that uh, a CBA exit from administration was the, uh, the best way of achieving Rangers survival and we have focused on that uh, objective from day one. We've never wavered from that. Uh, we, we think uh, a new call route, which obviously has been widely publicised and widely reported upon in the last couple of months, we think that's just not the way forward. And I think some of the issues that Bill Miller faced in this week, I think, uh, illustrate the problems with the new call structure. So we very much uh, are only interested in the CBA solution here. Um, one of our other uh, obviously objectives was to bring together the Rangers family in terms of uh, engagement and indeed ownership of the club going forward and uh, we very much had uh, in our mind uh, a broadly based ownership structure for the club. Obviously the club has, has had a number of um, uh, sole owners over the years which has been fine uh, in some ways but we think the way forward is much to have a broadly based ownership structure. Uh, just to be clear who the Blue Knights are, there's been again various, uh, I seem to be the only Blue Knight, but there are actually other people involved here and, uh, and indeed other people who might have got involved. Uh, just for the record, uh, the core members who have been with me since the start of this process are Douglas Park and his family, who have been great supporters, uh, Paul McKenzie, who has been a great supporter, Scott Murdoch and Ian Hart, and a number of those guys are here today and be happy to speak to those guys afterwards. Uh, we picked up this uh, way from stray in the shape of Brian Kennedy along the, along the way. Brian and I have been talking to each other for, I think, every day for the last three months since the process started. And, and I, I very, at, at a very early stage, I came to the conclusion that Brian Kennedy was, uh, first of all, a very serious businessman, very well-intentioned, and had Rangers' interests at heart. So we, we had a pretty, pretty quick um, meeting of minds on the way forward. I respected Brian's approach, which was very much not to be part of a consortium, um, uh, and we proceeded on that basis. But uh, as, as the weeks and months passed, it became clear to me that, we, that joining together was actually quite a powerful combination, and that's what we did uh, a month ago or so. So that's really all I want to say at the moment, just by way of introduction, and I'll pass over to Brian to talk a little bit about our bid and its structure in quantum. Sure. Um, there's been a lot of spin going on uh, over the last uh, few weeks and we just want absolute clarity on where we stand and where our bid stands. And I will uh, stress too that the, the quantum and the detail of this bid has been discussed with Paul Clark just a few hours ago because he wanted to know what I was going to say about what our bid was just to make sure that both ends meet and we're not contradicting each other. So these numbers have been clarified over the telephone with Paul Clark. Our bid is as follows. First of all, £5.5 million pounds up front. In effect, this is conditional in a CBA and delivery of Craig White shares and release of the security. So that was composed of £5 million pounds plus 500000 on delivery of Craig White shares. So collectively, that's £5.5 million because we now have an agreement with Mr White to get his shares. Um, Secondly, there was contingent upon European success over the next few years. There's a further £2 million to be put into the CBA pot. Um, thirdly, uh, we would have to pay the football creditors, find a mechanism to pay them, because if we didn't, number one, we couldn't play in the SBL, and number two, we couldn't qualify for Europe in years two and three in the event of exiting uh, the CBA. So that's a further £3.5 million debt we were taking on. When you buy a company, you generally buy it debt free. So that's a further 3.5 million debt, which is exactly the same as cost. So the total quantum of our bid is 11 million pounds. We inherited 3.5 million of debtors, which is money owed to you. So you could argue that that could be netted off the 11 million pounds. I want to be absolutely clear in this. However, we will say that the club runs out of money at the end of May, so from the 1st of June, 
it needs to utilise these debtor payments and we would have utilised these debtor payments because we would have been paying the bills from the 1st of June had we got preferred bidder status and the £3.5 million debtors would have been used to cash flow that and any shortfall beyond that, which probably would have been substantial, we had promised to fund as part of our deal as well. So just to make it absolutely clear, that is the financial quantum of our bid. The only conditionality of it is CBA, delivery of Mr White's shares and release of security. It's not subject to due diligence or anything else. That's the only conditionality of the bid. I hasten to add this bid has gone up over the weeks, not as is typically the case in these situations, gone down. So that's the financial structure of the deal. What were we going to do going forward? I, I, we just feel it was important to elucidate on exactly what our strategy was going to be to restore this great institution back to its former glory. Um, albeit this is a marathon, not a sprint, it would have taken a long time, but here, are, here were our plans which would have started as of tomorrow morning. Um, first of all, we're going to construct a, a, a board structure uh, consisting of very experienced businessmen and top quality operators. The biggest issue with Glasgow Rangers and why it's in the condition it's in now is because like any household where you spend more than you get in, it eventually catches up with you. And that was the biggest issue with Glasgow Rangers. So the first rule of business is to stay in business. So therefore, the first thing we had to do was put in a very tight financial structure, look at the overhead of the business, look at how much we're spending on the players, on the support, on administration, various contract supplies we've got, how could we improve the revenues and how could we minimise the costs so that very quickly hopefully actually in year one, then expenditure could match revenue. And there's no better man than I know on this planet to take on such a, such a task, and that was Mr. Gordon Mackay and his able deputy financial director, Eamon Hegarty. Gordon Mackay um, is a, a gruff, tough, intelligent, first-class businessman who rescued Scottish Rugby Union from, from insolvency. When he took over the SRU, there were 33 million there or thereabouts in debt. The bank was knocking on the door saying, you have to reduce this. When he left, he got it down to 17 million in debt within its facilities and turning a profit as opposed to losing six or seven million a year, Gordon, there or thereabouts. So I thought, who better to go in and do this job on the financial side and the managerial side and the operational side of ensuring we get the best contracts and we give the best possible customer service than Mr Mackay and Mr Hegarty. So that's the financial side of the board and, uh, and that's critical going forward and probably the most important given where ranges are today. But clearly another important area is to grow the revenue so we were looking to bring in some top class lads who we were going to do a beauty parade on to bring them in with a view to building the global, global brand of Rangers um, so that we could grow turnover. And uh, we had some plans, and I won't mention any names right now, but we have discussed it with uh, a couple of people. Thirdly, and probably realistically, what the business is all about is the football. And too often you get chairmen and chief executives, in my experience, fall into the same trap myself, more with rugby, of starting to think they know who good players are and who good players aren't and going out and doing deals. And that's not the way this club would have run going forward. You have absolute experts in their field running the area of concern or importance for the business. And so we had constituted and agreed with Mr Walter Smith and Mr Graham Souness to come in and run the football board along with Mr McCoist who would be managing the side. So Graham and uh, Walter had agreed to come in on a part-time basis, probably a non-executive basis, with a view to helping Alistair create this long-term strategy, going out, finding the best players at the best prices um, with a good, good prospects for the future. <coughs> and for the three of them to be able to go in and do that working collectively 
uh, we all thought would have been an absolutely phenomenal team to come together. So that deal was all agreed. Um, the final detail of it was not agreed, but I was on the phone to uh, Walter last night for an hour and a half, there or thereabouts. Uh, he is absolutely passionate about restoring Rangers back to health, and he would have been delighted to be part of that. I, I do add, however, he did not want to be uh, in a managerial capacity over Alistair. He's made that clear before, and I've responded to him and said that is not how we see it. We see it more as a creative, strategic, helpful way of just developing in, in the football and letting Alistair make the critical decisions. And of course, Mr. Sunis speaks for himself. He would have given us a tremendous amount of credibility worldwide should we want to go out and sign a young French lad coming through the ranks or a young German lad or from the Northern Leagues or from the English Football Leagues that was uh, he would have been a fantastic asset and Graham Sooners is absolutely up for this as well so that was going to be the structure of how we ran as a business um, in addition to this and I won't go into too much detail because it's pretty boring at this stage it would have been a lot more interesting if we had been named preferred, state, uh, preferred bidders um, the, the key to the business going forward when we're long dead is it continues to grow from strength to strength. So during the due diligence period, we were going to write out the Rangers Football Club constitution. And that constitution was going to be a document that stated categorically that the board of Rangers Football Club would always perform absolute financial care and diligence in its business dealings, we would never spend more than we generated. Irrespective of who came along with a big wad of cash, that is not what's required for this football club to have longevity for another 140 years. And we were going to ask the fans to buy into that, and if we've got a 90% vote on that from the fans that signed up to the constitution, we would have gone ahead with the deal. It's critical going forward we don't end up in the mess where we spend uh, monies that we don't have. So that's the, the sort of financial governance and, due di and diligence in which we were going to go about um, running the business. Got anything to add to that? No, I think that's uh, pretty clear, but I think we'll take some questions in a second. I think just, just to fi finish off it and just to clarify you know, why we have withdrawn today, because obviously we, we have been literally working on this transaction for three months uh, flat out and so it's not a decision we've taken today lightly uh, but it's a simple fact that as we said before we see the only way forward for the club is to affect the CVA and unfortunately time has now run out uh, there's just no time left now to affect a successful CVA uh, and to exit the club in, in a healthy capacity from that process we have told Duff and Phelps that on, on a number of occasions uh, the process has gone on far far too long for various reasons. Uh, we told them last night that uh, we, they basically had until midday today to come back to us and they, uh, they came back, they wanted more time, they, uh, they claimed to have uh, another, another interested party, uh, I'm sure you've probably heard that individual's name um, and we've said well you know <laughs> I hope you're making the right choice, you've made you know you've obviously made other choices in the past which have turned out not to be the right ones for the club and I really, really hope this time they've got it right because if they haven't, the, the future is pretty bleak. Pretty bleak. Paul, well, if your bid is now off the table, um, what do you hope to gain from this media conference? Well, I think it's important that, uh, that we explain our position because there's been a lot of, uh, quite frankly, there's been a lot of, uh, we think, um, mis misinformation and spin, as Brian said before, which has been. Uh, created in this process. I mean, obviously it's a very high profile situation, I understand that, but we have been misrepresented on a number of occasions and as I've said on, on, on various uh, outlets including on your programmes, you know, I, I, I think that's, if people are trying to help the club, you know, and, and, and the people involved here, let's be clear, are all people with Rangers interests at heart. There's no one doing this to make money, I can assure you this is not a way to make your fortune. Uh, and you know, all the people involved here, I think you can see, are people who get Rangers interest at heart. Uh, and I find it perplexing that uh, Duff and Phelps actually go about almost to try and question why we're doing things and misrepresent us. I just find that bizarre. So that's, 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 that's the purpose is to really explain why we've, why we've withdrawn today 
and to answer your questions. I'll tell you, I'll tell you the reason for the conference as well. Uh, is we wanted to articulate what our plan was. And anybody with a brain in their head can see this as a credible plan that is fully funded by credible people with the right motives. And that's what we wanted to articulate. And by virtue of the fact that Duff and Phelps have chosen not to go with us as preferred bidder, they'd better have somebody good to come along to Rangers, some good, credible consortium, fully funded, who does not fall away next week, and the result being the liquidation of Rangers Football Club. That's the main reason for today's conference. But you, but you won't be back, is that what you're saying? Well, it's too late. It's too late. This is not some clever brinksmanship. This is our lawyers, Walker Morris, telling us, Brian, Paul, if you want us to do a proper CVA, professionally put together, we need a team of lawyers in Ibrox tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Otherwise, we cannot deliver the CVA before the start of next season. So was it your understanding, Brian, that your bid was the largest bid financially on the table? I'm not interested. I don't care if it's the largest bid. You know, if when, 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 when you, you've got a, an institution like this that is on death's door, what's important is not just quantum, and that quantum is substantial, I believe, it's deliverability. We cannot afford to make another mistake. It was well documented that a sequence of events would happen if they went ahead with Bill Miller. <coughs> they went ahead with Bill Miller. That sequence of events happened. Now, fortunately, they were gracious enough, to be fair to them, to withdraw quickly, because they too recognised the importance of time. But if you remember, when they went ahead with Bill Miller, I said, guys, get behind Mr Miller, support him, because time is running out for Glasgow Rangers Football Club. Now, we're another week down the road. Time is running out, so Duff and Phelps had better have a good, credible bid on the table that doesn't fall over for the benefit of this group. Why do you categorise Duff and Phelps handling of this administration? I'll hand that over to Paul. He's a bit more passionate than I am about it. Um, well, I, I think uh, I, I don't. The purpose of this press conference isn't to rubbish, rubbish Duff and Phelps. I mean, obviously, they have got a difficult job to do. It is a complex situation. Uh, but I look at the situation and I think you should be, you, most of you guys I guess are, are sports writers and football writers, you're not business writers but I guess you're a little bit bemused about the process. I mean I look at the situation as a businessman who's been involved in these situations quite a few times and I ask myself the question what has really happened in the last three months? What has been achieved in the last three months? Uh, and in the meantime the club is running out of money uh, and is in a perilous state. So, um, you know, if I look at the key issues that have been around since day one, which just to be clear what they are, you know, Craig White shares, the football player contracts, the SPL, the SFA, have any of those issues been dealt with to enable an unconditional bid to be made? I think the answer is no. In these circumstances, would you categorise this as a high-risk strategy or a risky strategy that the administrators are undergoing? Uh, let me jump in on that one. We've had people in there doing due diligence, Gordon Mackay and his assistants. So we know what the numbers are. We understand it. We're not, I don't think we're going to find anything that's going to surprise us. That's really critical in a deal like this. We could quickly execute this deal. Anybody else that comes in now are behind the eight ball. No, we said to them last night that, that as Brian has just said, we, we need to start work tomorrow. Uh, and literally, even probably tomorrow's even pushing it, pushing it in terms of the legalities of, of, of affecting a CVA. So we're very clear, we, and we, we said that overnight in the press. They undertook to come back to us by lunchtime today. They didn't do that. We went back to them and said, where are we? And they said, uh, you know, we, we can't give you an answer now because we, we've got this other party. And, you know, we've been here before. We've been here with Bill Miller. They chose the other party. They made a mistake. And I really feel they're going to do the same thing again. It's, it is, you have no idea how critical this situation is. This is absolutely critical now. I so mean, I, I, can I stress, guys, that, sorry, Paul, there would be nothing better for us than Duff and Phelps to come along with a fantastic, credible bidder tomorrow morning who put the money on the table and save Rangers Football Club. Him and I would get a lot more sleep as a result of that. 
We do not. This is not about us owning Rangers Football Club or Douglas Park or anybody else owning Rangers Football Club. It's about Rangers Football Club surviving. That's what we're fearful of. So we would be delighted if Duff and Phelps were able to pull one out the, out, the, out the hat and come up with a fantastic bidder that was going to safeguard Rangers Football Club. We fear that they may not be able to do that. Why is it the, financial, the financial margins, relatively speaking, between the bidders doesn't appear to be huge. So, you know, given the fact you've named the, the other nights, they seem to be fairly wealthy men, would it just be a case of upping the bid a little bit further to guarantee you get this club? Is it not that simple? Well, we, we, look, a week last Saturday, I spoke to Paul Clark, who's a very nice chap, you know, very amicable lad. And I said, Paul, where do we need to be? He said, you need to be a quantum of 8.5. If you can get there, we should be able to go forward in this. That answers the question. That was a week last Saturday. Do you think they've moved the goalposts? Do you think the ministers have said something, but actually... I, I, don't want, I, don't, I don't think we should get caught uh, up in decrying the administrators. This conference is about saying to the administrators, make sure you come up with a credible bidder, because you're running out of time. They've, they've intimated this afternoon that the Blue Knights Consortium has plenty of time to purchase the club, to process the bidding process. Would they have been able to do that without any problem there by saying that? Yes. Yes. But we, we, we've offered, you know, our, our deal's been on the table for 10 days now. They just went with someone else. So maybe they don't, the don't like process, us. Though, earlier on in the process. We, didn't pull, we, we didn't pull out the process. I mean, if you, if you look through what, I mean, I'd actually like to come back to Chris's question as well, but just to take your question first, John. You know, what, what we said, and you recall, was quite a deliberate comment we made. Uh, we were, and this is going back almost a month ago now, we were working with Ticketus, obviously, as part of the process. And the reason we're working with Ticketus is to be clear. You know, when, I, when I first announced we were working with Ticketus, it was almost a sort of sharp intake of breath as I'd invited in you know, this horrendous institution. You know, Ticketus were actually key uh, at the outset to getting a CVA affected, and that's why we're working with them. Uh, and we went through that process. Unfortunately, we couldn't reach an agreement with them. We parted on an amicable basis. They're still supportive of us. We're supportive of them. But you recall that, that during that part of that process, they, Ticketus, went to, to try and do a better deal for them with the Singaporean bid. And so we said, in the interest of the club, we'll step, step back, we're not withdrawing, we'll step back to enable the Singaporean deal to happen. Because again, even at that point, a month ago, time was running out. And the Singaporeans obviously did not proceed after two or three days. So we, so we didn't withdraw a child, we actually just, we, we just stepped back in the interest of the club. I, I, mean, I mean, back to Chris's point, I mean, you know, the point is, Chris, you know, this is not, as Brian said, it's not about the quantum, it's about, it's about del deliverability. There's no point comparing our bid with, say, Bill Miller's. If Bill Miller unravels after two days, What's the point of going to Bill Miller? You've just wasted two days. And I really feel it will happen again. So, you know, there's no point in comparing something that is deliverable with something that's not deliverable. The fact it's higher is, to me, is irrelevant. I mean, if somebody says to you, get to there and you'll be okay, and you get to there, you expect it to be okay. But it wasn't okay. It didn't happen. Fine. And, and, then, and then, sorry, we reflected, sorry. We reflected on it and said, why are they not going with us? What's the problem here? And we thought, it can only be our conditionality because they can't deliver Craig's White's shares. So I flew up to Inverness last Sunday, got in a taxi, went to Granton and Spey to see Mr. White at his castle and spent three hours talking about Rangers. He wants Rangers to survive. I know he's had a lot of bad press. He wants Rangers to survive. And he agreed to give me his shares last Sunday. And he wrote it down on a bit of paper with a few conditions of which I won't go into the detail of at this moment in time. So we thought, right, now we've got the shares delivered. What else can it be? And a conversation with Paul Clark last night, which is why I've ended up flying back from New York last night, was, Brian, you're way ahead in the due diligence. Let's just go through the numbers again. You know, where you're looking, you're looking quite good because the other parties are way behind. That's why I've flown back from New York. Now, they're now saying that the quantum of the other party is greater than ours. And this game could go on forever and ever and ever until it's too late. Tomorrow morning, it's too late. Are you surprised that there are suddenly other bidders out there that weren't involved before? I think we're all surprised, aren't we? Suddenly, these guys pop up from nowhere. Where have they been for the last three months?
And this is without a doubt, this is the interest in Brian's view, this is the most complex thing I've ever been involved in in 25 years. So quite frankly, for someone to arrive last week and try and figure all this stuff out is, to me, is bemusing because the, the, to actually try and grapple with some of the issues that Rangers face at the moment is, is, is on a level of complexity that is way beyond any normal business transactions. Only people who really understand it, I think, can actually make this happen. So I am very surprised that other people have arrived. Well, I mean, you'd have to ask them that question, obviously, but um, clearly it's frustrating for me, it's frustrating for us, there's a few of us here today, it's frustrating for Brian, you know, all we want to do is see the, I mean, I've said before, you know, I'll step down right now if for someone better. I, I, all I want to do is go to the matches and my family enjoy, enjoy the matches. If someone, if someone rises tomorrow and says, I am a billionaire from wherever. I love Rangers. I say, fantastic, come in, you know, run the club, along with the person who's obviously a proper person. You know, that's, you know, that's what we all want. We all, we, all we want is the club to be safe, in safe hands with people who respect the club's history, respect its traditions, and want to take it forward. And, and I've always said that, I'll, I'll step down tomorrow. So I, I don't understand why, um, you know, Duffin Phelps haven't said to me that, 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 that they don't want to sell the club to, to me or to us, but um, I do find it frustrating and certainly strange that they're almost the people who want to help the club, they're, they're almost going to try and frustrate that process. I, I just find that actually very strange. Can I ask you about the, the tax case, the big tax case? Was it possible, do you think, to have proceeded without knowing the outcome of that? And, and to do so, had you had negotiations with the revenue? Had they agreed to a CDA with you? I'll answer that. The tax case is irrelevant in this process because when you form a CVA, all debts go into the CVA. So irrespective of what that debt, what happens with the tax case, it's in the creditor's voluntary arrangement. It does not affect the new business moving forward once it comes out of the CVA. So to form the CVA, did you not need the agreements of the revenue as a principal? You do, creditor? obviously, yes. Ah, so that's yeah, kind yeah, of what I'm getting yeah. at. Well, well, they, got that agreement. Yeah, well, they will obviously, they'll, they'll factor into the decision-making process, obviously, the fact that they might lose or win or whatever that case. Yeah. Uh, had you reached that agreement with the revenue? Had, had the the revenue will not, will not, they will not agree until right at the death in the CVA. That's according to my lawyer, David Hinchcliffe, who's done lots of these deals. Sure, you so can't you, get a pre-agreement. You couldn't be confident and neither can Duffin Phelps that this deal could have worked there, until you had the agreement with the revenue. There are several uncertainties. Also Ticketus. Will Ticketus vote for the, vote for the CVA? They've told me they would. They want the club to survive. They're honourable men as well. They've lost a lot of money, but they would vote for the CVA. I can't see, we could not see the revenue not voting for the CVA because the alternative liquidation would give them less than the quantum we're currently on. So why wouldn't they do well, it? Well, they might want to send a message, right, today, that, that uh, you know, given what's happened, it's football and, and given what's... That, that, that could happen, but it would be a very cruel thing to do to the fans who are the innocent bystanders in this. So, so, sorry, Chris, I, just, I think Stephen has been waiting for us. Sorry, 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 sorry. Um, sorry, I mean, you're not here to decry the administrators, but there have been various occasions that have always seemed to decry here. And even today, the suggestions that you know, you're trying to persuade other bidders to pull out, you're trying to drive the price down, and they use the word spin drive. I mean, have you been pretty appalled by some of this? I, I, you know, when somebody tells a lie or creates spin to deliberately mislead, You've got to understand what's their motive. Why would they do that? Why are they so keen for this club not to go to the credible bidders of the Blue Knights? Is it really quantum? Well, according to Paul Clark, not really quantum. Is it the conditionality? Well, we've sorted that out. There can be no certainty in the CBA, but that applies for all parties. So why do they keep throwing this spin in? I cannot answer that question. Paul, what do you know about the man who is fronting the bids to appear to be favoured by Duffin Phelps, Charles Green? Well, just uh, not much, but obviously we have done, you know, what you've probably done, uh, half an hour of basic uh, due diligence and uh, interesting guy. I don't think we're here to decry any other bidders. That is not, that is not our, our position or uh, our responsibility. Why it's Duffin Phelps. 
because I like to do things privately. I hate to be in front of the camera. You know, it's just like, look at us, we're in front of the camera. That's not what this is about. It's reached such a critical stage now that we have to get out to the fans, to the people that will listen and tell the truth. And we will answer any of your questions, providing it doesn't go on into the night. You ask us whatever awkward question you want to ask us, and we will tell you the truth, unless it's bound by confidentiality. So we want to get the truth out. Uh, it's, 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 it's obviously the question to ask. It's a very difficult question to answer as a Rangers supporter, first and foremost. I mean, I think you look at the situation and uh, a CVA is now looking very, very difficult in terms of timescale, as we've said before. Uh, the new co-option, which is obviously the easiest option in terms of deliverability, uh, we believe is financially so difficult and it's obviously got a, a, a range of other issues in terms of, you know, uh, football-related issues and no European income, etc. All of which are related. Um, it just looks very, very difficult. And I, and I think a lot of the issues that Bill Miller faced, which were not being smart, Alex, but it was quite obvious to us that if you looked at the books for more than five minutes, you would see that. And uh, um, you know, it doesn't, didn't surprise us that he that he quickly withdrew from the process because you know the sums of money involved. Uh, in a new code structure are very, very large, very large. So oh. is there anyone out there who's going to step forward and fund a new co? There hasn't been much evidence of that so far. Um, so I don't really want to think about it because it's, it's so difficult to think about it. But it's, you know, unless Duff and Phelps have got, a, a, you know, a plan which is, um, I've not seen so far, I think we're in a real crisis, a real crisis. If, if on the back of what we've had to say today, Garden, you have so much water, smoke and so on. If supporters decide that you're really willing, and they don't want the preferred video microphone to come on, is that anything you can still do? If there's such a groundswell of public uh, opinion? We're, we're dealing with the law here. Yeah. And, and Duff and Phelps are, are appointed by the they're court appointed <coughs> administrators, and uh, it is their responsibility. They have to listen to the, the supporters because they are the customers. But if they come up with this, if this guy is a credible guy, or whoever else comes along and comes up with a bid, if they're credible people, um, then I would recommend that the supporters and everyone get behind them if they're credible, because uh, what is the alternative? Paul, what would the, your feeling be in, say, a couple of days' time if this government of collapses? Would your feeling be as a Rangers fan that someone who's trying to save the club? Well, obviously, I think that's be hugely disappointed. Uh, and, uh, you know, You'd like to think the club can still survive, and uh, obviously it's a massive institution. Uh, but uh, you know, one the chat asked the question about why we're having this conference now. I mean, you have to understand how big a crisis this is, this is now. This is now an absolute crisis, and you know, time is now run out. So decisions that are made now are absolutely critical to the, the, club, the future of the club. So you know, as Brian said, if there's someone out there who's, put, who's better or more, more credible than we are, brilliant, but step forward now and do it, because there's no time left. So, you know, and, and, and I think our frustration is that, um, as we said last week with Bill Miller, and, and we weren't, uh, you know, Bill Miller is a, you know, an honourable guy, he's a good businessman from what you can see, um, you know, Brian publicly, you know, supported Bill Miller and, and we were the same, you know, you know, we just want someone to, 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 to basically save the club and, 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 you know, the issue here is that if this, this, this other party uh, you know, decides on Tuesday morning that we don't want to do it, then you're wasting another week and, and, and there's just no time left. You know, that's the issue. Um, and the very fact they've come to the party at the last minute, it just, it just doesn't feel right to me, I have to say. Brian, can I ask you about Craig White? Um, for three months he's been a huge obstacle, big hurdle to find. And you've just spoken for three hours 
and go into um, transferry shares or agree transferry shares. How did you do that in three hours? I don't know. I think it's easy to vilify someone, and Craig White clearly, is, you know, has has done a lot of things that are wrong. But sometimes it can get exaggerated. And I sat down and talked to him man to man and said, "Look, Craig, we've got to do everything we can to save Rangers." And is is he agreed with that? And that's why he agreed to transfer the shares. There has been a suggestion um, that one of the conditions to put upon that would be that all. I'll let Paul answer that one. Yeah, I mean, that, uh, well, first of all, it's pretty well documented, uh, you know, some of the discussions that uh, uh, Craig and I have had. I, I mean, just to go back to uh, where this all started a year ago or so, you know, I wasn't uh, against Craig White as a person. There was nothing personal as far as I was concerned. I, I just didn't think the deal that was done was in the interest of the club. And I said that at the time. I said it for many months onto a BBC programme. I said that again. And I'm not being a smart ally, but what, everything that happened was obvious a year ago, it just was going to happen. So this wasn't a personal thing against Craig White, it was just, it was, again, as a Ranger supporter, as a former director, it just wasn't right for the club. Um, but to answer your question, I, I've, I've discussed this with Brian um, at length, we've got a very open relationship, and I'll say it today publicly, I, I will step down today if that's an issue. So if that's an issue with, if Craig White uh, is preventing this deal happening because of my involvement, I will step down today. Not a problem. I'd rather see this is not about my involvement, but the club surviving. And if that's an issue, if that's an impediment, I will step down today. So the point being, I'm very open with um, Paul, and I told him what the conditionality was. Where did you hear that information from? Can you not? It'd be interesting where you heard that from, because that's highly confidential. Well, you're still talking about this bed in in current terms. That, that, that's, that, that's it. This is the end of the road. This the end of the road, yeah. Did you make any approaches to Bill Miller to withdraw this bit? Did I personally? Yeah. Where did you get that one from? That's another bit of confidential information. <coughs> anyway, um, uh, I, I approached Bill Miller because I felt compelled to, to tell him why a new co doesn't work financially. And I spoke to his partner, had many conversations, and I've got the text messages here. And I said, look, if you're going to go forward with Rangers, and you're genuine, then go do it as a CVA. Then it financially works. So I was giving them financial information in order to, if they were going to go forward and buy Rangers, to not waste time and ensure they knew what they were getting into. And then at one point, um, and I've shared this with the administrators, said, look, if you don't want to do a CVA on your own, Come in with us, and we'll all chip in together. Myself, the Blue Knights, and yourselves. I said, Quantum, probably we're all going to come up with about 27 million. I've got the text still in my phone. That was the information I shared with Bill Miller. But they weren't interested. They wanted to go forward on a new co basis. I knew it didn't work. Paul knew it didn't work. They found out it didn't work a week into the bid. You don't think you persuaded them anymore? Pardon? You don't think you dissuaded him in any way? Oh, no, no, this was, this was three weeks before he was made preferred bidder. Remember, our motive is to save Rangers. It's not to own Rangers. It's to save Rangers. And if somebody's coming in that's credible, and we think they're going in the wrong direction given the inside information we have, we will help them. We'll tell them. It's very difficult. I, I can't see such an institution as this um, disappearing completely. You know, I would say a likely outcome would be um, it's possible that there could be no bidders next week. This other guy may come through, another bidder may walk in. Um, if in the event of there being no bidders, then I would suspect that it would be a new core situation 
similar to the Bill Miller bid, but starting off at much lower levels with a lot less financial investment. But I don't know. I, I can't see into the future because it hasn't happened yet. Just to clarify, Bill Miller's feeling was that the CDA would have to take month upon month upon month. Do you, do you disagree with that? Absolutely. We, we've got the best lawyer in Britain who's done more CVAs um, it, with the football clubs um, and more administrations with football clubs than anybody. And he's the one that came up with the detailed timetable to say well, we need to be in there tomorrow morning to start this, to get it away before the end of the season, before the start of the season. Okay. okay. Thanks for your time, folks.